Hey guys, Script here with another video, and sorry if you hear any kind of uh, noise in the background. There's a lot going on in the house right now. I've got a pretty good area to do videos, but sometimes there's noise stuff going on. But so, <clears throat> Star Wars, who are the Knights of Ren? And, <laughs> and this goes back to so many of my videos recently. Like, we're still discussing this. And you think about it, like, when did Force Awakens come out? 2015, I want to say? Yeah, 2015. And we still don't know anything about these guys. Like, guys, it's just... Oh, but don't worry, they'll make content for you to buy to figure out who they are. <laughs> That's what they do. They leave these gigantic, as JJ called them, mystery boxes, and then you get to spend money years down the line figuring out what the heck any of this stuff even is. So what's the latest news? Because I ain't buying no comic books and I ain't, I ain't spending a dime to figure out who these guys are. But I am curious to see what they ended up doing with them. So they enter the sequel trilogy, introduce several new pieces of lore to this already vast sci-fi fantasy universe, including the mysterious Knights of Ren, led by Ben Solo, introduces the fearsome team. Fans were good to see what they were. Also, like several elements of the mythos, da, 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 most of the lore surrounding Color Run's band of Darksiders was only explored in supplemental materials, namely the mainline canon Marvel comics. And this is what I keep telling you guys. I don't think they're that stupid. Like, they're stupid, but I think when they looked at, at The Rise of Skywalker and they said, oh yeah, we have like still like no scenes of them and none of them have any dialogue and nothingness. And then, and then they shove it in your face with that spot where the, the stormtroopers like, oh cool, the Knights of Ren. That's literally them telling you as the audience, hey, they're super cool. We're not going to explore them in the movies at all. But go buy the supplemental material and figure out who the Knights of Ren are. That's literally what they're doing. And I don't know why fans don't see this. I don't know why people don't see this. I get comments on my Twitter sometimes and comments on my YouTube videos sometimes where people like don't seem to get this and they're saying that they're just stupid people. No, this is a marketing strategy. It 100% is. Now, it may not have been with Palpatine, although I think it probably was. I, I don't mean it was, like, from the beginning. I mean, like, when they called Ian McDermott after they had, like, scheduled shooting, like, a week later. They said to themselves, hey, we'll just throw him in there. And then someone said, yeah, but the fans are going to be like, why is he there? We didn't explain anything. And then I think they said to themselves, it's okay, we'll, we'll have supplemental material. I don't think it's like they're smart enough that they, like, plan this out from the very beginning. But I think that they are, they are smart enough to say fans will spend money so don't worry about it we'll just explain it later which is exactly what's happening now with the bad batch which is happening with mandalorian that's what they're doing so anyways this is the same thing with the knights of ren so now we're almost 10 years later and we're still <laughs> still doing this oh the neighbor's dog's barking now great <laughs> so these wandering roads rogues followed a sinister yet free-flowing structure regarding their goals having affiliated with some key groups and figures across the galaxy from the group's formation to the waning days of the galactic civil war to its demise during the battle of exegol the knights of ren led an eventful if breeze did they <laughs> it was eventful i mean i guess they they caught chewy and that's it i don't know while the Knights of Ren are, are closely so associated with Kylo, this group of dark side mercenaries existed before Ben Solo was born. The Knights were founded in the closing days of the Galactic Civil War between the Rebellion and the Empire during the original trilogy. What? I thought these were, these were the other students. That would have been the one thing that would have made them kind of cool, is that they were they were the other students at, at, at Luke's Jedi Academy, and that Ben took them with them. Oh, no. In a prequel comic, The Rise of Kylo Ren by Charles Soule and Will Sliney, originating from the unknown regions of space? What? So they're like, it seems weird. Like, I thought they were just like kids trained to be Jedi, but Ben was like the leader of the group, and so he convinced them to go with him. Uh, their ideology was based around the red lightsaber he wielded, also dubbed Ren? What is this? Battle of Yavin. Hold on, hold on. These Marauders were founded three years after the Battle of Yavin in Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope by a human male going by the alias Ren. What? Their ideology is based around the red lightsaber he wielded? That's their story? Also dubbed Ren? Seeking to be guided by the dark side of the Force to lead them to power across their many violent raids across... The so these are old dudes. <laughs> these are old people. Ben, I thought, I don't know why, I literally was like, the only the thing that makes the most sense is these are Kylo Ren's But Why would they go under Kylo Ren's authority, though? Like, if they're that old and they've been around. Ben Solo became their face during the Star Wars sequel trilogy, but Kylo's predecessor gave fans a more in-depth look into the Knight's philosophy from decades earlier. Each group member wore similar masks, but only the leader could wield the red lightsaber, the Ren. 
Oh, so that's why he's named Kylo Ren. But of course, so so here it is again. A, a human male going by the alias Ren. So now they're going to make more content about this Ren guy so you can figure out why. Like, guys, this is a business model. It's so obvious. Oh my gosh. They operated as one of the few Force-sensitive groups during the Empire's reign as Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader saw it as the potential rivals were either exterminated completely or quelled far past the point of maintaining a vast organization. But Ben's like pretending to be Vader. Why would he involve these dudes who were rivals? This is so dumb. So it's all based on a lightsaber. Like, so guys, like literally like this is what Disney does. They've turned lightsabers into fetishes where it's like, and like objects into fetishes. So it's like, so like Rise of Skywalker was all about finding more MacGuffins and objects than like figuring it out. And then like they made a big deal about Anakin's lightsaber and they, and you know, and they, they're fighting over it. And we're not going to explain where it came from, but they're fighting over it. And they made a huge deal. Like it's all about these objects. It's, it's not really very Star Wars. Like when you watch the original trilogy and even the prequels, you weren't like, they didn't focus attention on objects. But like that's such a huge thing now. Uh, they operate. Okay. <laughs> only the leader could wield the red lightsaber. <laughs> what a stupid! <laughs> only the leader. Why wouldn't the other guys be like "f you" and just jump him and t- kill him and take it? <laughs> this is what I mean too about villains. Like they're not making villains like like selfish and hostile towards each other anymore. It's like they're just like they're just like there, and they, and it's, it's like they're, they're like they have like a seed of imbe- of uh, of embevelence a little bit, like <laughs> like they have this little bit of good in them. I'm gonna fall under the authority of Kylo. We're all gonna be good, good, good little guys. We're not gonna harm any. Like it's just both the Sith and the Knights of Ren sought to immerse themselves in the dark side, but the former were the totalitarian with their approach, while the latter's lifestyle was more flexible. Okay, their lifestyle. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what are they, club on the weekends or something? Uh, they said no qualms would align themselves with whomever they felt would help them gain power. And that's my point. If if it's all about gaining power, why would they fall under the one guy with the red lightsaber? Why wouldn't they just kill him and take it? Like, why wouldn't they be fighting with each other? Like, this is the problem with villains in Disney Star Wars. Like, they, they're not really evil. And they don't really want to gain power. They only want to just, like, be part of a club. <laughs> it's like it's like they're trying to tell you like if you if you're part of this club then you have power even though they don't like they were under Kylo they had no power they just, they and they weren't even they didn't even do anything <laughs> this element of their philosophy was seen in another critically praised comic book miniseries once again spearheaded by Charles Soule and illustrated by Stephen Cummings titled Crimson Rain this comic saw the return of Solo a Star Wars story Kira now leading the organized crime syndicate Crimson Dawn and attempting to overthrow the Galactic Empire after she learns it's secretly run by two Sith Lords <laughs> it's so ridiculous crimson dawn's gonna take over the galactic empire like 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 the rebels had to go through like year decades of like fighting them and like massive resources and two death stars and had to do all this stuff but the crimson dawn (laughs) kira's gonna take over like it's just what is going on why? Lady Kira sought to recruit four sensitive combatants for this grand plan. So she hired the Knights of Ren for a series of high stakes missions. This includes infiltrating Fortress Vader. Oh, so Ben must have been thrilled with that. Uh, uh, the enemies of Vader, the the the, <laughs> the the mercenaries hired to like go kill Vader or go like infiltrate his fortress are now his buddies, even though he's like Mr. Worship My Grandfather. <laughs> clashing with this eponymous Darth Lord. Excuse me, clashing with its eponymous Dark Lord and stealing the ancient Sith Art. So they fought Vader? And then Kylo Ren was like, yeah, come join me. Even though, like, again, why wouldn't they just jump him and kill him? It is so stupid. However, after having too many casualties during their alliance with the shadowy Crimson Dawn Syndicate, Ren announced the Knights' alliance with Lady Kira. By the end of the Galactic Civil War, however, they had already secretly pledged loyalty to the presumed dead Emperor Palpatine and his newly formed Sith Eternal Cult. What?! It doesn't make any sense. See, they secretly pledged just because not, it doesn't make sense, right? The stories don't make sense. So now it was a secret. Nobody knew. And they just joined a secretly pledged loyalty to Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> And he was, and why would you be secretly, why would you be, why would you be pledging loyalty to a guy who you think is presumed dead? (laughs) So stupid, man. The comics are worse than the actual, like, stuff they put on screen now. They're so bad. 
Wow. Back in the in the Rise of Kylo miniseries, the Knights of Ren spent time in the shadows looking for recruits during the New Republic era. This eventually led them to attempt a raid on an ancient Jedi outpost on the planet El Elfrano. Oh, Elfrano. Dating back to the High Republic era centuries early, the Knights intended to scour the old outpost for Jedi holocrons. More objects! Ooh, gotta get the objects! And exotic weaponry, but they didn't count on a chance encounter with Luke Skywalker, his apprentice Ben Solo, and explorer Lor San Tekka. The latter group aimed to find anything of use from this ancient age of Jedi to help Luke rebuild the Order. What are these villains? Like, what are they even doing? What's the purpose of this? This event would plant the seeds for Ben Solo's descent into the dark side and rebirth as Kylo Ren. This is so dumb. Seeing that the odds were slim at best to defeat the Luke, to be, defeat Luke Skywalker, Ren opted for a tactical retreat, but not before removing his helmet and tossing it at Ben's feet, telling him to find him once he is ready to join the Enclave of Dark Side Knights. After Ben killed his Padawan companions and destroyed Luke's temple, he sought Supreme Leader Snoke of the First Order to join him and seek advice on tracking down the Knights of Ren. That's how they spin this? Really? So he just killed all of his Padawan buddies? So it's just like Reva, right? So he's mad that Luke thought about killing him. So he's going to kill all of his friends? Like, why wouldn't he be like, wait, Luke could kill my friends? It's just like Reva. I want to kill Darth Vader, so I'm going to kill a whole pile of, because he killed Jedi. So that means I'm going to join him and kill a whole pile of Jedi myself so I can kill him. Who is writing this stuff? This doesn't make any sense. You guys, this is so stupid. I, <laughs> the fallen Jedi embarked on a grim quest to prove himself to the Knights leader, culminating in clashes against his fellow Padawan students and killing Ren himself. This satisfied the Knights of Ren's criteria for joining and leading the Enclave, and, except they never seem to want to kill their leader. They just, they're just these, like, they're minions. <laughs> so the rest of the group leaving Ben kill, killing their former master constituted a great death. Why don't you guys all just jump them? There's five of you. In this sense, the Order of, the, of Succession of the Sith, known as the Rule of Two, is during the Old Republic era, and the Knights of Ren is similar. New figureheads are acknowledged through hostile, lethal takeovers. Wow. The Knights of Ren would achieve their highest level of power when Kylo, the Enclave's master at the time, became the new supreme leader of the First Order after he murdered his former master, Snoke, blah, blah, blah. But much like the Skywalker saga, the Knights of Ren would meet their collective end in The Rise of Skywalker before the final movie in the flagship film, blah, blah, blah. It's only seen briefly in cryptic cameo when the young Jedi and making touched Anakin's lightsaber and had a vision of Kylo leading the mercenary group of Darksiders. Which, again, makes no sense. Lightsabers don't give you visions. Like, this is another Disney nonsense. It's just fetishizing an... It's a weapon. It's not going to give you visions. And why would Anakin... Sky, okay, if it was going to give you visions, it would give you visions of, like, stuff Anakin saw, not the Knights of Ren. <laughs> they still didn't have much... They had no presence in The Rise of Skywalker. With the characters having little more than a cam... They never had any lines or anything. Even so, the group achieved new prominence in universe. The Knights of Ren effectively replaced the Praetorian Guard that served the late form of blah blah blah. Kylo Ren's bodyguards. It was revealed that Snoke himself was merely an artificial life form, and that the resurrected Palpatine was using a proxy to position a comeback for the yeah, yeah, whatever. The Knights had already sworn allegiance to Palpatine with the Dark Side users answering squarely to him following the former's redemption and return to the light side of the Force. During the final assault against the resurgent Sith Lord on the planet Exegol, Redeem Ben Solo now complete with the blue lights of... Yeah, he kills them, blah blah blah. After Ben sacrificed to help Rey defeat the Emperor for good, the final remnant of the Knights of Ren's presence in the galaxy was snuffed out. Considering the sprawling nature of the Star Wars universe lore, the Knights of Ren place in history was brief nonetheless even if it was mainly confined to the shadows they were involved this is literally like this is literally like doing like so in the original trilogy right you saw the praetorian guards they looked really cool and then palpatine's like leave us and they leave and you're like hey those guys were cool nobody was like i need stories about them now any more than like i needed boba fett to be re resurrected he was what he was it was fine we didn't need more boba fett write a new character <laughs> so the same with these guys like they were nothing they were just kylo ren's security guards why did we need like <laughs> why do we need all this ex explanation of about kylo ren's security guards <laughs> Oh my word. Anyway, this is just more dumbness, guys. I can't believe it. Knights of Ren are so stupid and they just get stupider. Why do they focus on this stuff? Again, I tell you why. Because there's enough of you buying the content that they just keep doing it. 
don't, you know, and I told you that Stormtrooper, remember, oh, Knights of Ren, they're so cool, or whatever he says. I'll put the clip. Knights of Ren, cool. It's to get you to be like, yeah, they are cool. They're not going to do anything in this movie, but that doesn't mean I can't buy the other product that has them in it. It's all a plan. It's a marketing strategy, 100%. I'm telling you guys, that's what they do. They throw all this junk, mystery boxes, JJ mystery boxes into these movies, and then the goal is to have your butt go buy a bunch of crap to figure out who they are. <laughs> Even though who they are is really dumb and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I th- Again, I, you tell me in the comment section, did you think like I thought that these were just the rest of Luke's students and he recruited them? Or did you think like they were some other beings and now they made up this whole stupid story? <laughs> like, And who's this Ren guy? Oh, I guess I'll buy the comic book to find out the original Ren. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. It's so silly. But anyways, uh, if you do like this content, please like and subscribe. Always up the channel. And if you do like it, of course, check it out in my other content and have yourselves a really good day.